here we are so what I'm gonna do again I'm gonna slow down the process when it's in front of the camera which is the left eye and the right eye will will blast through it to save some time so we're installing the eyes so I, I put a little bit of a clay a layer of clay inside the ear uh, eye socket and a ball of clay inside the back of uh, the eyes just for making a good adhesion so they just bond together very well clay to clay so red heart beast has a very dark eye make sure you use your glass i'm sorry make sure you use your uh, flashlight um, up close against the glass so you can see the pupils are parallel to the ground the pupils are kind of like uh, oval and horizontal so they're gonna stay um, level to the ground okay now we're going to create the eyelids I usually like to start with lower eyelid and then continuing with the upper eyelid a good portion of these glass eyes or plastic eyes or acrylic eyes a good portion of these eyes are going to be underneath the eyelids so keep in mind if you're a beginner or you're just getting going it doesn't mean whatever eyes that you're looking at it doesn't mean most of it should show out like or to, or to be visible it's not because as you can see I'm covering um, a big portion of the eye not the bigger portion but a, a fairly good size of around the eyes is going to be covered by clay and eyelids so in order to make a soft looking eye on it sorry the camera went out of uh, focus um, my newer videos I kind of put them on manual focus okay there you go so um, you make sure that your eyes are looking soft and th the only way you can take care of that is making sure that your eyes are not bulged out just look at your reference all the time and try to create what you see as close as possible it's gonna take some time but um, it'll get there okay now the eyes are done the clay work on the face is done wherever it's needed we apply a lot of height paste um, and then we'll pull the skin slightly over and start sewing it up There you go, the skin is going slightly. You can see how odd looking animal is this. This is like, the skull is quite long and the horns are kind of like, you know, out of shape, right sitting on top of the skull. It's just, it's not looking right. It's weird. It looks like it has some sort of a, you know, headband or like head wrapping or something like that around. And then it seems like some people have put a lot of rubber bands around its forehead so it pushed its skull growing that way anyway so the skin is uh, pretty much all over uh, the mannequin right now I like to cover up the face while I'm doing the sewing as much as I can keep it moist um, so we're gonna go blast through turbo sewing right now fast as possible now the skin is sewed up about that 10 inches or whatever it was and now we are applying high paste to the rest of the mannequin that we didn't apply so you can apply your high paste all over the form but it's gonna be messy it's gonna get all over your hair so go portion at a time go a little bit at a time uh, as long as we put glue on the whole thing yeah, that's all that matters and make sure when you're dealing with the wrinkles wrinkles are like think of it like a curtain the old style curtain it has a lot of wrinkles when you have a 10 feet curtain when you open it up open all the wrinkles you're gonna maybe have 20 feet of fabric 
So you gotta uh, think of that the same way when you're putting the mount together. All of those wrinkles are gonna give you extra size. So make sure you just don't pull everything out and smooth out the wrinkles. The extra skin needs to be tucked in where it belongs, which is exactly where we don't made up made up those clay areas and wrinkle areas. So, and the, the color pattern on the African animals is a big help for us to know where the skin needs to sit. And I like to start from brisket, give myself uh, a symmetric, uh, basically, distribution from the bottom. And then we'll go and adjust the rest of it from top. I like to close everything before I start doing the finish work on the face. Some people, I've seen that they, they start finishing the face and then they do the rest of the labor. I'm the opposite. I like to do all the labors as fast as I can so I can spend all the time I want before I get too tired on the facial work and the details. So I'm putting a lot of staples all around right at the edge behind the board, cutting the excess skin off. So basically the skin is closed now and we just have to do the rest of the work on the face, wrinkles around the skulls and all of that. The fun part. So far it was all labor. Now it's um, kind of like more detail work is coming in. So anyway, push the skin off the eyelids against the eyes and slowly tuck it underneath the clay eyelid that uh, you built. And once in a while, there's going to be some height paste on the eye with a wet Q-tip. You can clean it out so you can see what you're doing. Uh, it's important to do that, actually. Otherwise, it's um, if the eye stays dirty all the way throughout the work, it's going to uh, trick your eyes and you can't see very well. So cleaning them once in a while is not a bad idea. Okay, I like to turn the mount upside down for the lip work. It's much easier that way. Okay, once again, uh, I like to start from the front. Make sure that the front of the mouth is centered and then both corners and the corners of the mouth and then work my way in between. And the lower lip is almost the same way. Proportionately, this animal's got a very small mouth, pretty much like wildebeest. They have a small mouth too, comparing to the size of their whole head and skull, their mouth is quite small. Okay, now it's time to move around the skin around the wrinkles, make sure that it's distributed perfectly right on the wrinkles because you don't want to push them down uh, too much into the neck area because um, you're gonna run out of skin and it's not right that way. Okay, the mound is starting to get some shape to itself, starting to look like something. Anyway, I'm uh, tucking in the skin around the nose and nostril. Sometimes it's needed to be pinned, we will do, and if it's not, I just leave it like that and then uh, push in my plastic bag, grocery bag into the nose. So it basically presses all the skin against the walls of the nose and it dries. Of course, there is high paste inside the nose too. 
these animals that they have some colors on them you can use the color and the color pattern on them to to distribute the skin and taxi it um, symmetrically and uh, red well, red heart beast is a good one for that because it has uh, dark patches on it so you make sure that both sides of the face or both sides of the head all the dark patches are in their right place okay we are working our way around the wrinkles it seems like our skin is pretty much where we want it all we have to do just keep moving it around and uh, with our tool or lip tucking tool or any kind of tool that you have for this job slowly push the skin into the gaps that you filled with clay and the clay that we put on those wrinkles is going to come in handy here for you because it's going to create a very soft looking wrinkles instead of having rigid edges to it it has soft looking edges to it i've also heard that some people create a extremely thick height paste and basically they create the wrinkles with applying more height paste around some areas as i said you know there is a lot of different ways to do one thing and achieve the same result you just have to find out which one is more comfortable for you or works out better for you now i am uh, in the back here as you can see there is a bald skin, a patch of skin right there I don't know what has happened it was some sort of wound that it was hairless anyway and I was going to cut it out and repair it but I just left it there because uh, it was the, sh the short hair on it is um, I better not mess around with sewing too much it was gonna show I mean kind of like you know it's part of the character of it it was not base it was not something that was caused after hunting or at the tannery it was like I think it was a fight wound or something we, we chuck it up to the character of the animal so anyway this animal is done I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the video which not not much is left and then I'll invite you to see the finished product uh, picture I hope you liked the video if you did please hit that like button and subscribe and share the video we will see you next week or sooner than that with a different project thanks for your time and watching bye bye